Hi, it's me, a long lost brother and number one hater on Binger. Welcome back to Parotak, episode 2. We're gonna find out why are there so many Malayalis in the Gulf. Kerala, the land of coconut trees. Kerala, the land of obscenely well shot tourism ads. I mean, have you seen the Kerala, the land of madrasis if you are a North Indian. Kerala, otherwise known as God's own country. But I don't think that the people believe in that enough because half of them are in another country. I am talking about the Gulf. <laughs> You would have heard this a lot. Kerala is associated with three things. Beef, people who eat beef and for good reason. Because there are over 3.5 million Keralites in the Gulf region. That's a lot of people. 3.5 million Malayalis. Now you know why they don't have a democracy. Because if they had an election, Fahad Fahad might become their president. Fa fa I love you. Do you want proof? Just look at this map. There is a Malayali restaurant in every corner of a Dubai street. If you throw a stone randomly in Dubai, you're probably gonna hear... Fun fact, Malayalam is the third most spoken language in the UAE. Which means that if you have Disney Channel there, you're probably gonna hear Hannah Montana singing. The impact is felt in Kerala as well. For example, this is a random hill in Kerala. Why are there photos of Gulf leaders there? Just look at them, they're so confused. Even they're like, What am I doing here? I am very confused right now. Is that man removing his mundu? So what exactly do we mean by the term Gulf? Geographically, it means this. And there are many gulfs, like the Persian Gulf, Gulf of Mexico. But in Malayalam, it means... The Gulf is a collection of countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE, Oman, which are all Islamic monarchies, characterized by the obscene amount of wealth that they have. And all that wealth is because of one thing. I I'm joking, I'm joking. The actual thing is... I am joking again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The actual thing is... <laughs> the truth for sure this time is... Oil. Huge ass oil reserves, thanks to geography. <laughs> and relaxed tax laws have created a safe haven for some of the world's most wealthiest and extravagant lives. And when I say extravagant, I am not making this shit up. It's insane. Like, For example, this kid who has a personal zoo in his backyard. Same as you, he also has two friends called Ramesh and Girish. Except his are endangered animals. Do you have a lot of money and don't know what to do with it? Do you want to know the best way you can invest your money? Well, Gulf Asset Assistance and Network Distribution is exactly what you're looking for. We invest your money in ever appreciating assets like artificial islands where you can be neighbors with Charukan, the, the Disco, the, the world's largest toothpick, camel races with robots on them. It's true, I'm not joking. And cute pets! Aww. For your loved ones. Why are you running? Gulf Asset Assistance and Network Distribution. Moving on. So the real question is how did Malayalis get entangled with these dudes? To understand, let's go back to the 1930s. Ah, the good old days of the Great Depression. No food with Hitler. We already know that the Gulf became super filthy rich thanks to geography. But they had a very small population and needed one thing. A mother's love. No, actually they needed... And as you probably know, Malayalis can smell two things from very far away. One is another Malayali. Dude. And the other is opportunity. And that's when a group of young Malu freakins set out by these boats without a single document. Between the Great Depression and the beginning of World War II, Malayalis were like, F*** this, we're going boating. They were really badass. Although they were submissive badasses because they were doing all this to go work for Arab masters. Hey, do you wanna come work for me? I will kill you, dude. Get, get away from you, f*** you, rot in hell, no way, I will not be succumbed to your capitalistic exploits when you're just using my labor for nothing, dude, who do you think you are, a baby, a baby, awesome. The journey by boat took a very long time, naturally, it was an unpleasant voyage and their futures when they landed were unpredictable, but the good news is that they made it to shore and got the jobs that they wanted. <laughs> By the 1970s, rising oil prices and the economic boom prompted Keralites to recruit more of their friends and family. And thus, the big exodus began. Which turns out was just a major referral program. Hi, I'm man. I'm your college junior. You remember me? What? Dude? And asked me a farewell party. You remember? And I said, 
Among the new immigrants, manual workers were the majority, but there was also a good mix of like doctors, engineers, and teachers. The holy trinity of respectability. And they were an engineer and a doctor. And they were a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and because of this and the wonders of reproduction every fourth indian in the gulf is now a malayali wow! if you want to know the impact that this entire thing has had on kerala you just need to know one word remittances it means all the money that is sent from people working abroad to their families in their home country and gulf mallu sent a lot back home and i mean a lot you want proof just walk around some random village in kerala and you'll find houses that look like this where there are eight bathrooms for one person namely you after a night of heavy drinking <laughs> Kerala as a state is heavily dependent on these remittances. Gulf men annually send home 6.8 billion dollars. For perspective, the Burj Khalifa, world's tallest building, built for 1.5 billion dollars. So this entire Gulf bet has made Kerala pretty rich. But the impact is not just one way. Malayalis have also had a massive impact in the Middle East by owning some of the biggest businesses like Astor Healthcare, Gems Education, and the only supermarket no North Indian will ever enter. Lulu. Chota sa lulu, chota sa lulu. Lulu, Lulu. So if an Arab were to buy groceries, buy medicine, or just generally exist, he's probably going to a Malayali. So is the Gulf dream still a dream, or are people waking up? That was unnecessarily dramatic. Not exactly, because one major thing seems to be happening: reverse migration. It's migration, but in reverse gear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We are going to be going in reverse gear right now. <laughs> It's this thing where a lot of non-residential Kerala's norks for short which is a terrible abbreviation by the way because we google norks and guess what it means Bruh. <laughs> Those are a nice pair of norks Don't do that normal Anyway a lot of those norks are coming back and guess what the main reason is And I covid kind of but not exactly <laughs> You see the GCC leaders you remember these guys are trying to promote an arab first policy which means that they're trying to decrease their dependency on foreigners and kerlites are first in the firing line sir what line is this one no nikuba 12 lakh mallus returned in a single year you could think of it like a grand homecoming but to a state where 30% of your gdp is dependent on these remittances that's a problem it's almost like a sugar daddy stopped earning and then moved in with you oh me sir the heart is Now we are in no position to tell you what's right or wrong because world politics. And I want to live and enter the Gulf because they have great shawarmas. Okay, like they're insane. All the hype about them is real. I've heard so many people French like say so many things about them, and I always feel like what is the kind. Never mind any of that. I can tell you the worst thing the Gulf has ever made. The Sharja Sheikh. You mix banana and Horlicks. What is wrong with you? I... Hello, hello, hello. Firstly, Sharja Sheikh isn't even from Sharja. It's actually from Calicut. What? You are so obsessed with us that you even named your Horlicks after us. Huh? Who would have thought that Sharja Sheikh is an Indian dish? I wonder what other Indian dishes have such weird histories, huh? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, I will be making more of these because it's fun. If you want, you can click the like button. Again, no pressure. You can also subscribe. You know, subscribe. Do that.